when you move into these scenarios, you're not going to be who you typically are when you're out. You are going to change your mindset into being what you would think that a police officer would do in a particular situation. You have a gun on one hand and a taser on the other, and you have to make some split-second decisions. Go, go. He goes this way, go to the left, and then search right around. Today what we're doing is we are allowing some of our youth to experience the things that law enforcement goes through. Um, it's a great thing because now they actually get to see and feel and experience everything that the officers go through from a day-to-day -day experience. I'm going to take the gun out of your waistband. Okay. okay. Put this hand up here because if he leans towards you, you can feel him. Now back off. It makes it very real for them the fact that they can get hurt. They have to make split-second decisions. Um, they have to use their mind constantly and not everything is the same. It may look the same on a traffic stop, but every traffic stop is different. And I think they learned that very quickly, putting them through the scenarios. I'm gonna need you to step out of the I'll car. get out, I'll get out, I'm out. I'm out of my car. This is my property. You have no rightful law to be in my car. This whole experience was a really great deal to me and I believe to the other children as well because it put us in the shoes of our our own police officers and we learned a lot because we were put in the same uh, dangerous situations as them and we see what they go through on a daily basis whether it be the verbal abuse or the physical confrontations that they have. This is actually one of the best field trips we ever went on with the Boys and Girls Club like I'm not I'm dead serious um, we actually were a part of the field trip like we actually got to engage and actually learn from another point of view. I'll go in with them keep the guns up you not. you don't know who he is yet okay there you go. We want this to be ongoing we have many many kids in Sarasota County from the north to the south and we really want to get students and young people talking about this getting an understanding of what law enforcement really is. And you were real good about being like, hey man, we're here for a disturbance. We're gonna find out what's going on. You said, hey, let me talk to you right away. You had me come outside, great. These are great kids that we're interacting with and just gonna make it better the next time they have a contact if it's real world on the street. And um, the relationship is important. So we're gonna see more of that as we continue this project over the next year. I'm definitely gonna have a bunch of my friends come and take the same class. And I hope they feel the same way that I do because this definitely changed my whole perspective on the entire training that they have to go through, everything, and I'm just great to be a part of it. I didn't think it was going to have the impact that it did. I really didn't. I thought they would benefit from it. I thought they would see our side of uh, what we do in law enforcement, but when you talk to them and you see some of their reactions, it was uh, kind of a uh, big eye-opener and life-changing to some of the kids that followed uh, in, in the later sessions, for sure. I really think this could help people open their eyes and maybe even teach kids a thing or two about law. You know, this is brand new for me, and it really helped me grasp like everything that they really do go through. When you're going through the scenarios, you are going through the whole situation, you never know what you're going to do until you get into that situation. So I think this is very good for them, very good. It's really awesome for them. The next step was bringing them into the, the community foundation here where we all came together uh, and we discussed. Dr. Sewell put up a lot of our objectives and, and the strategic plan on the board and we just had kind of a group think, group discussion from their perspectives and traditionally we've not, you know, had a segment of the youth contribute to the strategic plan or, or to, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we do at the Sheriff's Office. So to bring them in at that level and give them a voice. Uh, and then be able for them to see what the product looks like in the end. They'll see some of the things that they brought up, uh, topics that were discussed in the end. I think that'll reaffirm for them that we believe that it was important for them to come in and contribute. You'll see some things as we go on. One is positive engagement of, with, with the youth of our community, because we listened to you the other day. Uh, we couldn't help but listen to you. She's got to be the best spokesman that the Sheriff Knight could ever have doing something. You guys aren't bad either, okay? But you know, <laughs> sis is the one here. First of all, all the members here, just a member of Keystone, that's a big jest because you're part of a leadership club that's changing things in our community. So we're proud of that. A member of our Keystone Club is very important. And being partners with our local law enforcement is amazing. So. As Almuda is becoming a great leader, Sheriff Knight's a great leader and his team, and we're just proud to be partners with all of you, and thank you for taking time out of your schedules tonight to be with us, and I just wanted to stop by and tell you all how proud I am of you to be in here tonight on a Friday night and making a difference in our community, so thank you all. 
We wanted to get the officers together and then uh, the BGC kids and just pick their brains to see like what were their perspectives and what are their interpretations of the opposite side. We have four different groups. I'm gonna give you guys a question. You guys are gonna collaborate and give an answer. Where do you get your perception of law enforcement from? Is it social media, TV, songs, personal experience, parents, family, friends, or pop culture? The only time we really see a cop is when they're arresting somebody or something bad's happened. Like, if they can be more active with us, like how you said, have them come to the club and they play with us, that'd be nice, because like, if you see them more at school and like we sat down and talked to them, we get to see how they're human too. Where do you get your perception of teenagers? And that's for the law enforcement. When we go to a call, it's because somebody called about maybe a teenager or something like that. So now we're going to that house just because somebody called us and said that they were doing something wrong. So that's our first perception. We do like other people because we're human, we somewhat categorize um, and just sort of group everyone in that, you know, this is their generation, this is what they do, you know, and then the music and the television somewhat supports that kind of behavior. Um, so we just sort of make that assumption that that's just how it is. That's just how kids in general are. So I think it's more so our perception drawn upon from our own experiences through our work. I just want to say, say thank you to everybody for coming out. Um, it's been a great journey and there's much more to come. Me and Muta, we, we talk all the time saying how we're blessed to have you guys uh, be a part of uh, what we're trying to build in this community. And uh, we're just thankful and we look forward to the next um, the next step, which is the next rifle policing strategy. Thank you guys as Keystone Club presidents for you know tackling this and working together and not only just you guys having an idea, but getting you know for the, the, the groups to come and participate like we said earlier. I think that's amazing. you know I think we all need to be leaders, um, whether you're kids, whether you're from the group, whether you know it's your profession.